Hello everyone, this is going to be another episode of the Road to 2K Guide. Uh, I'm doing this very quick because I forgot I was recording one right now and the game already started. But basically we're going to hop right in and I'm going to go ahead and run you guys through 1100 to 1200 ELO. And we got Byzantines this time around, so we're going to go ahead and just hop right in with that. Last episode we talked a little bit about build orders and start. I'm going to go ahead and Alt G to get blue. And today we're going to just build on that a little bit further. I'm also going to be implementing a little bit more sheep scouting to make my Dark Age more efficient, albeit slightly harder to perform. The reason why sheep scouting is important is because the sheep does pretty much nothing under your town center besides one or two that are eating. So with the other two, I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, good luck, have fun. I like that, sportsmanship. I'm going to go ahead and just scout my base. They act as mini scouts, and the way I like to use them... Oh, found some more. The way I like to use them is to clean up my scouting. For example, right here I didn't scout this area. Let's go ahead and scout it with the sheep. Here, nothing much is here, so I'll just go around a little bit more. Oh, let's go back there. These guys can go back to the town center. And as you can see, the Dark Age is already getting more involved. I'm playing faster, I'm doing more things. It's an involved Dark Age. However, that's not coming at the expense of my town center. My town center is always running. If you guys are not fast enough or proficient enough, to scout with your sheep, don't do it. Or start with one sheep at a time. And you don't scout for too long. Once you scouted a little bit with the sheep, you bring them back because you don't want your opponent to take them if he comes forward with the scout. So just a couple minutes sheep scouting, and then you can pull them back. I'm also gonna talk about how to uh, set up the next sheep. You're gonna go ahead and shift queue the bills so that when one sheep is done, there's no walking around, there's no bumping. They just go right away to take the next sheep. And I'm gonna be trying to do that throughout Dark Age. At 1100 to 1200 ELO, you're going to need to really start having a good Dark Age. It's not going to be perfect for you guys at this ELO, but I'm going to try to give you a, a good example, or an, you know, a good example of a solid Dark Age here. It's not going to be a perfect Dark Age here, but it's going to be pretty solid. If you guys are interested on what a perfect Dark Age looks like, I actually made a video on that where I showed a close to perfect Dark Age, like 99% perfect, as humanly possible, to have a perfect Dark Age as possible on my channel, it's called How to Do the Perfect Dark Age. Check that video out. It's gonna be very helpful in being efficient in Dark Age. All right, when the boar comes in, we just hit the boar with our villagers and try to kill the boar right under the town center, as close as possible to underneath it. There we go. If the villa's in danger, you just garrison it before the villa comes, or the boar comes, the elephant, whatever it is. And now, like always, a house, then our mill. I make the house near the barriers to limit the walking time and stay efficient. All right, all that aside, let's talk a little bit about the matchup and our plan. Always good to have an opening plan, and I'm playing as a Byzantine. That bill should go to berries, my bad. Always good to talk about um, the matchup and get an opening plan in. So Byzantine versus the Goths. I'm thinking late game. I've got Cataphract, the counter infantry, amazing unit versus the Goths. Early game, Byzantine don't really get that many bonuses. So why don't I make my strategy I'll open with a few archers to bait my opponent into going Huskrolls, and then I'll switch it up and go straight for Cataphracts in early Castleage. That seems like a good plan. I'm getting to Cataphracts early. I'm defending myself early with some archers while I wall up my base, because Byzantine is a bit of a slower sift to start. And yeah, I'm getting towards Cataphracts. It's a pretty good unit. I'm going to go ahead and just take a sheep. Remember, if you're late with the boar or the elephant, just take the sheep, take the goat under your town center. It's going to save you a lot of resources. You garrison, put it back on the elephant, and that's perfect. Next bill, we'll make a house. Well, it doesn't have to be the next bill. It could be any bill. We'll make a house. I'll make it here. I want to wall this side anyways, so we might as well do that. And yeah, I scouted up my base pretty nicely. I'm going to go ahead and scout my opponent now. Go ahead and click there, and that should be quite nice. And yeah, I'll probably just go up with 20 population towards Feudal Age. Uh, 20 pop archers is a pretty easy strategy to... Uh, it's a pretty easy builder to execute, tempting. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not going to recommend this as an aggressive opening. I recommend it more as a defensive or passive opening. Because I'm going to only do one range and just stay at my base for most of the game. But... It's perfect for times like this. We just dropped food, by the way, and click up. Nice. It's perfect for times like this where I just want to defend early and come up later with a strong unit like the Cataphract. 
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and send this villa over to the wood line and also send villas over to make a second lumber camp. Um, and this is fairly standard. 10 on wood, guys, it's gonna run you, it's gonna run you a good start for any builder that you do. If you're talking about like maximum efficiency, maybe 10 on wood won't be 100% correct. However, it keeps it nice and simple and it's something that even I use in my, in my pro games. Uh, most of the time, so yeah, it, it's just an easy number to remember and something that I recommend. All right, the way we do the straight archer build, by the way, is we take a few bills off of uh, the sheep and we just send them over to the wood because we need a little bit more wood to get started here. And I'm gonna go ahead and make my barracks with two villagers. I'll send one from food, one from wood, and we'll make the barracks. Then we'll make the archer range all part of the wall. I'm delaying going to gold. I'm gonna go there right now with a couple of bills. The reason why we're delaying it is we actually don't need that much gold um, right away. We need five bills on gold eventually, but I don't care to have like consistent production of archers. I care more to have like the range down on time, one extra spear if needed, the double bid axe. I care to have a good economy rather than a constant flow of archers. And we will aim for that constant flow of archers, but it's just not gonna come in right away. But it's not going to be so bad, uh, by the way. Always fix your economy whenever this happens. Keep an eye out on that. And let's go ahead and see what our opponent's doing with the scout now. We haven't really talked about scouting too much, but it's important to scout your opponent and see what they're up to. Again, always fix your, your resources. Go back here and one Vilken wall, and we'll make some archers. And like I said, we might have a couple seconds downtime, but for the most part, it's going to be fairly solid. My opponent is going for a barracks, and then what else? He's chasing with the scout. Nothing else. So maybe he's doing men at arms. He's playing as the Goths. That's the strategy we covered last video. Go ahead and make my blacksmith here. And like always, I'm going to go ahead and wall with a couple of bills using a mix of palisade wall and uh, houses. I'm also going to pick up horse collar when I can afford it here. We always get those eco upgrades. That's like the basic way to do it. I, at top level, skip some of those eco upgrades to get sharper timings, but that's not something you have to worry about at this level. At this level, we pick up eco upgrades because they help us build up our early game. And as soon as horse collar is done, we're gonna go ahead and make some farms, simple as that here. And yeah, I get a constant production of uh, archers. Five on gold is the magic number for one range. It also gives you enough gold to get fletching at a reasonable time, which is right now. All right, and with this build order, because like, what's my strategy? My strategy is to get getting to cataphracts. I don't need to attack them with archers, and so for that reason, I'm not gonna even attempt to attack them with archers. Oh, my uh, economy does not seem to be the greatest here. Keep the villas running. And so I'm gonna stay defensive and just wall up my base. I got fletching to ensure nothing bad can happen, and I'm just gonna wall up my base with a few villas. This gives me the perfect time to talk about how to wall your base, and I might even make a separate video on this altogether. I'm not gonna wall my base like this, and like this, and like this, and then here, because those walls are way too difficult to defend. Yes, having your stone in the wall is nice, but I'd rather just fully wall quickly and as cost efficiently as possible. Uh, I wanna have small walls that are easy to defend and cheap to build, because as soon as I'm fully walled, I will be safe from any feudal age aggression, and it will buy me time in castle age when I'm getting attacked, I'll have a little bit of notice as he's taking down my wall to see where he's going to attack me from. If you wall too far out, you're A, walling more, B, it's going to be harder to defend those walls because he's going to be able to hit them here. You have to walk a villager from your base all the way over there, and you might not make it in time to re-wall behind. Once my walls are done, I can go ahead and attack my opponent with a few archers. So remember that with your walls, you want to defend them and you want them to come down as fast as possible so that you're safe really early and then you can move out freely. All right, this is a really overpowered way to play. Also, Vils, remember that. That's the biggest thing you can do if you wanna have a good early game, keep your town centers running. It's a really overpowered way to play because, or it's not overpowered per se, but it's, it's really safe, it's really consistent. Being fully walled and attacking my opponents, I can throw caution out the window here because there's nothing he can do that will attack me. I'm fully walled. He can maybe sit some archers here. He can try to kill my wall, but if he does that, I can wall behind it. So I can attack 100% freely here without having to worry about a counterattack. 
and that is such a powerful position to be in. I'll go ahead and continue making farms, keeping my economy efficient, and he might be walled himself. Oh, he's going scouts, yes. That is a fresh scout. Always click your opponent's uh, units to see what upgrades he has. And there I saw that it had full HP, not like the other scout that was half HP. And here he's fully walled. What can we do with the archers? Nothing too crazy, we can try to break in. We can try to harass the berries maybe here. But remember, the plan was not to kill him in Feudal Age. The plan was to get the Cataphracts. And Cataphracts are the best unit in this matchup because the counter infantry and Goth is all about infantry. I'll try to harass him over the wall here to keep him a little honest. And I will also continue making crossbows here. Oh, he's actually open there. I'm not gonna take advantage of that hole because the game will end on the spot. Obviously in a real game, you guys go in there, but you know, I'm gonna, I, I don't wanna frustrate him. I don't wanna, you know, just take advantage of a small mistake like that. Happens to everyone, it sucks. We'll go back and we'll play proper strategies here. All right, as we're getting close to clicking up, we're gonna go ahead and just garrison up our farmers and come on, can we get three food? We can, there we go. And I'll continue making some archers here. Oh, getting housed, not good. We can fortify this wall with some houses. You can kill that scout though. I'll let you get away with the hole, but I won't let you get away with that scout. All right, now we get gold money upgrade. Uh, we're also going to get Archer Armor on the way up. If you skipped Horse Collar to get a sharper build, get Horse Collar on the way up to Castleage. But I already got it, and my farms are solid. That's perfectly good. From this position, do you add a second range or not? It's a good question. Do you add stables or not? Do we look to play more aggressive? All of those options are really good, but I'm going to do the thing that makes the most sense with my civilization, and I want to go Cataphracts. However, I don't want to just mine stone randomly and make a castle at the start of Castleage because I already have my archers for the start of Castleage. I only need the Cataphracts when my opponent has Huskrolls out on the field and a decent amount of Huskrolls, not just four or five because four or five I can kill with archers. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop three TCs in Castleage first. That's gonna be my main priority. I will upgrade my crossbows to put pressure on my opponents while my three town centers will pay off. The unit I wanna go into is Cataphract. Therefore, I'm going to make a town center on my stone right here. And I also need a safe wood line so I can make a town center maybe up here on this wood. So on the way up, I'm going to go ahead and break the wall and make some town centers in those two areas. Oh, ooh, getting attacked here with the skirms. I like that. I will run away. It's a counter unit. I'm going to wait for my upgrades, crossbow, bodkin. We also pick up bow saw and I'm going to make my town centers. I make one here. He's not attacking me, so I can make my second one here, nice and safe. And I pulled those off the food, so I'm going to replace those guys on the food. You can also refresh your lumber camps here to make them more efficient. Think of that as like an eco upgrade. I'm going to spend an extra 100 wood to make my gather rate faster on the wood line. Now that I have crossbows, my unit is stronger than a feudal skirm. I will go ahead and attack him. This gives me the perfect time to talk about patrol or attack move. Whenever I move out on the field, I don't right click. This is right clicking. That means that if I run into enemy units, my units won't attack them. So I have to babysit my units and making sure that they're not taking damage. However, I could just patrol or attack move across the map. And if I run into any units or buildings, I will automatically attack them. This lets me focus on my economy, take a look at my eco upgrades, take a look at my situation, make some houses. And if I run into enemy units, I will just simply attack them naturally. Much safer to move out this way. Make sure to remember that. I'm not going to do too much on micro, but since my opponent is still in feudal age, you have to attack him with the archers. We waste no time. And now I've got my three TCs rolling. Uh, okay, we can attack his skirms here. Stay safe. Hit and run for the most part. And you can actually break walls easily with crossbows. That's not nice. I'm going to kill that scout. And yeah. Focus on spending your resources and making bills from the three town centers. I've got 800 wood. We need to spend that. I'll make a market. It's just a good building to have. Uh, I can make a monastery, a university. Those are buildings I'm going to need anyways to get up to imp or throughout the game. Looks like he's defending with some towers. And I don't, I don't really need to end the game with the archers. 
but I want to put pressure enough to, you know, make it worthwhile getting the archers. So we can go ahead and kill a couple of bills. But I don't want to throw the archers away because, remember, the archers are my main defense until I get my castle up. So I want to keep those alive as long as possible to defend myself. Remember, this is more a defensive build Byzantine. And I'm just trying to spend my wood, guys. I got way too much wood. I'm going to make a siege workshop. I'm going to make some more farms. And I'm just waiting to get a castle and go for cataphracts right now. This is the perfect time to also pick up your gold mining, uh, stone, stone mining upgrade since I'm mining some stone with a few bills. And I'm just going to keep these guys defensively. I'll also make a siege workshop to counter his skirmishers for the time being just to buy myself some time. I have markets. I can balance my economy and continue making some bills here. And this is also something I, I recommend. One vill to make houses away from your base, like on the back of the map, or to reinforce walls. These, this way, you maximize the space, you secure your base, and you don't have houses blocking your path randomly. I'll make one man canal defensively. And we'll continue booming. This is a solid time to get wheelbarrow. The age old question of when is wheelbarrow worth it? Uh, I've heard 16 farms is a good timing. I'm on 35. Oh well, could have gotten it earlier. I'll pick it up now, no harm, no foul. I'll make a couple houses here to reinforce my wall. Oh, don't, don't get in though. And I'm just sitting at my base waiting for cataphracts. I can even buy 100 stone to speed up the process here because I have concluded from the start of the game that cataphracts is the most important unit that I need to get to. So let's get to there ASAP. Defending my base now with the crossbows. You shall not pass. All right, and now my cataphracts are caught on the field. I'm gonna set them up with a stable for husbandry. You don't get blood lands as Byzantine, so we don't get that. And as you can see, it's really just me trying to spend my resources and trying to make sure that I have as little wood as possible because wood doesn't make cataphracts and wood doesn't get up to Imperial Age. Wood only makes farms and buildings. It's the worst resource to stockpile. If I'm stockpiling food or gold, well, I can easily just spam units. But if I'm stockpiling wood, all I can do is make the production for, for units or the production for economy. So wood is a stepping stone resource and it takes the longest to convert wood into other things. So my main plan when booming is to convert that wood as fast as possible so I have the other resources that are more useful. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up town, uh, sorry, not town watch. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a uh, hand cart here. I already get town patrol for free with Byzantine and I can already start making cataphracts. You can also go up to imp here. Both are good choices. I'm gonna make cataphracts because I want the map control and I wanna be able to get some units out on the field and attack my opponent. If you're not scared of any attack, go up to Imperial Age. No problem with that whatsoever. I'm gonna mine more stone and you know what? Maybe it's time to expand on to this side. So we can delete a house here and I can make one more town center here. Now that I, I can afford extra town centers or extra buildings, let's go ahead and make those. I'll get all my upgrades for the cataphracts. I got husbandry. So that unit will be insanely strong. And one thing guys, I, I'm expanding my base with my town centers. A lot of people have the bad habit of making the town centers really close to their base. That's a really bad habit because that means that you're gonna finish your woods really quickly and you're gonna be forced to move out when it's not the right time. This is the perfect time to move out because I've got units to defend myself if he attacks me and I don't see his military. So this is the perfect time for me to move out and get another town center on my important resources. And I'm gonna continue spending my wood. Remember, wood is the worst resource to stockpile. Spend that wood as fast as possible and keep my town centers running. All right, I'm investing into cataphracts. I want to use them. I also have crossbows and I have a mangonel. But I'm going to keep those on defense. My main unit is the cataphract. It's going to counter his skirms that he has. And it's pretty good against uh, infantry. So let's go ahead and click imp. Imperial Age is queued. And I'll continue making cataphracts. One castle is obviously not enough. So what we're going to do is get a second one as soon as we can afford it. I'm mining a lot of stone here. Spending wood. And now we can get heavy plow, it's a good time. And he's on a light cavalry. Not really too worried about that. Let's go ahead and try to attack him with the cataphracts here. I really hope to see some of his infantry to show you guys how strong the cataphracts can be. 
Oh, he's got a castle. We'll avoid that. Click his units. He's got Botkin Arrow on the Skirms, so the castle does a lot of damage. And see, I got some feedback to comment on some of the things that my opponent my opponent is doing wrong in the series, so I'll try to do that. My opponent is on Skirms, which makes sense. That was a good move that counters my crossbow. However, then my opponent invested into Light Cav. That is a bad move, 100%, because the Light Cav is not countering any unit I'm making, and it's not the power unit of Goths. So him making a Light Cav is com completely nonsensical, and it's not rooted in a proper game plan. So he's maybe making Light Cav because he likes it, but remember, we gotta make units that make sense, not units that, you know, that we enjoy playing with. Um, I'm, I'm not against fun, by the way. I just say it's more fun to win games than to lose them, and so I'll help you win games to have more fun. Uh, by the way, something to talk about right now, you can pick up relics whenever you can. Um, listen, it's not something that's going to win you every game, but it will win you some late games. So pick up relics whenever they're free. It's a good habit. Alright, and you know what? I've got too much wood. I'm not making a wood unit. I'm making a cataract which costs food. I'm going to switch a lot of those farms. And this is how you do it, by the way. Make a mill. Take wood bills and search them to farms. Click the mill at the end of it, they make the mill. And look at this, I'm gonna take some time to, to show this. After the mill is done on both sides, the bills will perfectly spread out to take one bill for every farm. Look at that, perfectly spread out. This is how you make farms, look at that. Look how efficient that is. All right, I'm gonna pure ledge. Don't stop making bills to 200 pop. Keep making villagers, they pay back so fast. It's 50 food a piece. I'm gonna get elite cataract, I'm gonna get my last armor. I'm gonna mass them up. And you know, I got enough for another castle, so we'll go ahead and pick a spot for that. Not too far forward. Let's go ahead and control this hill. And I got a lot of cataphracts. My opponent's still castle age. I want to end the game right here, right now, pretty much. So I'm going to go ahead and get castles forward, get my cataphracts in place. It's a good time to think of a siege unit. The siege unit of choice I'm going to use is Siege Ram. The reason why I'm not going to go Trebs is because I have a melee unit that likes to dive in. And my castles are making the cataphract, and they're not making trebuchets. I don't want them to make trebs. So I'm going to make cataphracts, and I'm going to go forward and make some siege workshops here to be able to push my opponent with cataphracts and siege ram. Now, typical compositions are one gold unit, one siege unit, and one trash unit. I'm going to open with cataphract and siege, and if my opponent makes halberdier, the only thing that might counter cataphracts, and I say counter because cataphracts are also pretty good against halberdier, it's a strong unit. Uh, I might make some skirmishers. Byzantine have good skirms, it's logical. When making compositions, think logically like that. You, might, you, you got your main unit that's good against his main unit, and if he makes a counter unit, you make your own counter unit that's good against that. And now my plan, once I have my composition, once I have my economy, my plan is to just get to 200 pop as fast as possible, because when you're at 200 pop, you have the most amount of units on the field. Your opponent can never have more units than you on the field, Except if he's Goths, I remember. I can sell some stone and afford some rams now. And so once you get to 200 pop, you know your army is so strong. Um, conscription's good. Good upgrade to get in late game. And we'll just mass some siege ram here. And just use the market if you need as well. Like I'm just going to use the market. It's, it's fine. Oh, by the way, these upgrades. This one's not that good. Don't recommend it unless you're like a certain Civ that benefits from it directly. This upgrade is pretty good, so you can get this one if you want. You can pick that up. Uh, that's, that's your guide for Imperial Age upgrades. Okay, I've got six more population. I'm gonna just save those spots for Rams. If you've got too many Vills now, and I recommend you, get, you make Vills till 200 pop. If you've got too many Vills, once you have your good economy set up, then you can start deleting your Villagers or your useless units. I have all my upgrades there. And I'm going to go ahead and continue making the rams. And, oh, this is kind of bad. I let my opponent have too much time here, and he's in pure ledge. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop giving him time to upgrade all his units, and I'm going to try to attack him here. Sea gems are going forward. The sea gem can go forward too. All my units go forward. I've got castles to defend myself. And I'm going to focus on this attack. Oh, I forgot what, one important upgrade. I forgot Logistica. <laughs> Let's get that. The chat's probably cringing right now. And we're going to attack him with Siege Ram and with Cataphracts. And there's no counter to Cataphracts for Goths except Halberdier. And even that's basically not really a good counter. 
Yeah, if he's on anything but Halberdier, and even that's not too little, we can kill those. And the Rams can do everything else. And we got the crossbows that from earlier to deal with the Halbs or the Pikes as well, so that's not too bad. Well, while we're attacking, we don't just sit here blindly watch. I'm gonna queue units, we queue cataphracts, we sell some food, we queue some siege ram, all while keeping an overall eye on the military. Now we can destroy our opponent's base with the siege ram, and the cataphracts can do everything else. And that is the perfect way to set up a late game and set up a powerful attack. I'm at 200 pop, my opponent can never be stronger than me. As long as I'm on the right units, I'm always going to have my strongest, uh, my strongest force that I can that I can field when I'm on 200 pop with a good economy to replenish it if they die. And yeah, the Rams will just do everything I need. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not pretty for my opponent here. It's not pretty at all. And. Obviously I'm looking a lot at my military, but you're going to need to tab back eventually here. Those will go idle. Just retask them. Once in a while, look back at your economy and just fix things, you know? These are, this is easy things to take care of. And already at 1200 ELO, before we talk about micro, before we talk about fancy stuff, or like, you know, timing attacks, the complicated things like that, let's just talk about the basics. And for me, the basics of late game is 200 pop, good economy behind it, good composition, and keep things rolling. Simple as that. We're not going to talk about forward castles. We're not going to talk about pushing, you know, with production buildings. Um, so we'll just talk about a few things like that. And Gigi's called. Uh, he couldn't have enough halberdiers to defend, and uh, our composition was simply too strong. And if you think about it, the best thing I did this game was pick the perfect strategy. Um, this is something that will take some time to get used to, but if you follow some of the tips that, I, um, that I'm talking about in these videos and some of the thought process that I'm going through, you're going to be able to come to the same conclusions yourself. You know, cataphracts are great against goths, great against infantry. Goth is known for infantry, so therefore cataphract is the best units. How do I get there? I'll play a little defensive and I'll develop my economy. And once I get to cataphracts, I waste no time and I attack my opponent. Um, I didn't really do anything crazy with the micro. I did, however, have really good economy. So I focused a lot on my economy, and I will stress that at the end of every video, your economy will not be as clean as mine from the get-go. But if you practice it, it will get better, and use the fundamentals that I'm talking about. Spend the wood, keep your resources low, you know, keep the town centers running, and expand your economy. Uh, that is the way to do it. And with practice, you'll get to a similar level uh, as mine, and maybe even to the exact level as mine, if you're uh, really uh, putting in the work. Uh, what did he do wrong this game? You guys asked me to cover this. Well, basically, he did make some wrong units, like the Light Cav, and he also didn't really attack me with the army he made. He kind of just sat at home. So things that you know kind of went wrong with his military, but he also didn't have as good economy as mine. And I'm not expecting him to have a good economy like mine, because the ELO gap is like pretty significant. I'm still playing at a pretty high level economy wise, not quite 2k7 or something like that, but I'm playing more or less like an 18 or 1900 economy wise. Um, so I, I will have better economy than him, but you know, he didn't attack his military and he made the wrong units. And that's the main things that he could improve on. All right, that's gonna do it for that game. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the stats and end the video. We're now at over 1200. So the next video will be 1200 to 1300 where we're going to advance our play and talk about some more complex things. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Uh, and I'll go ahead and scroll through the stats if you guys are interested. And there's the timeline. Thanks for watching, everyone. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.